that possible right so so i think that is the beginning or the clustering definition of unsupervised algorithm and supervised algorithm is a classification right that into one of numerous already already defined definite classes right so that classification how many classes how many groups that you have defined in the beginning for a classification algorithm right if you do not have that kind of classification you have to go with unsupervised you are you do not have the label data right training sample label data is provided in a clustering unlabeled data is provided so how do you measure the distance between two points right so let's say i have a one customer who has certain age x11 is age x12 is the frequency of purchase right how many times that person purchases in e-commerce sites right so if we take only two variables i have two customers x1 and x2 one person's age is let's say 23 and uh, c purchases let's say three times on an average per month in a e-commerce site another person is 25 he purchases let's say five times right so how to measure the distance between these two points difference between age 23 minus 25 square of that plus distance between their number of frequency 3 minus 5 square so both are 2 2 square 4 2 square 4 4 plus 4 8 eight. 8 eight square is 2 square root 2 uh, root over of 2 right so that will be the euclidean distance between those two points it seems easy whenever we have two variables but naturally like whenever we are comparing groups or forming groups there will be multiple variables okay before i start this discussion let me share the file on which we are going to work um, just give me a moment so we are going to work on a clustering data set that is country wise details is given just a moment so please keep your enterprise miner open i will come back and uh, carry out the exercise so this is where most of the times we will be using euclidean distance but in some cases what happens whenever we have some geographical information uh, longitude latitude right whenever we are measuring distance between two cities or distance between two locations right in those cases uh, euclidean distance might not work right think about in this scenario right from your home if i say that okay whichever is your nearest mall if i how you go it is not that the short, shortest distance is the distance between those two point right because in a city in a location based data you have to follow a path you will move certain distance in y direction then you will find a road you will move certain distance in x direction right so whenever we have those kind of parameters location parameters right we want to create some clustering out, out of this location parameters we use something called manhattan distance so that is the absolute distance in the x direction and y direction right that is not the straight line connecting those two distance those two path right if i just try to like kind of use the same distance measure here uh, like let's i have two variables variables uh, age and frequency right frequency of purchase 23 3 255 so in case of i measuring that distance through a manhattan distance so the absolute distance will be 23 minus 25 that is 2 similarly 5 minus 3 that is 2 2 plus 2 4 right in the euclidean distance the same distance between those two point would have been 2 square root of 2 right here manhattan distance it is 4 obviously 4 is greater than 2 square Uh, root of two, right? So this is where Manhattan distance will be always higher than Euclidean distance because distance between any shortest distance between any two point is a line, right? So generally, like, but most of the cases we will have certain kind of uh, data which will be much more suitable for finding distance be as in Euclidean distance, right? Uh, then what about whenever we have binary data, right? so mostly we will discuss this again in the next class when we discuss market basket analysis think about a uh, uh, 
retail outlet right or let's say this example for netflix kind of netflix or those kind of ott platforms when they show suggestions right recommender system how do they do it so they see that okay how the similar customers right those customers who have watched those three movies or four movies what is the next movie they have seen right whenever uh, your information is not in terms of a continuous data in terms of a binary data somebody has purchased a item or not yes or no somebody has seen a movie or no right how you use that to create clustering right so whenever we have continuous data or metric data we can use this euclidean distance or distance measure whenever we have nominal data right we use something called jacquard similar coefficient again there are lot of multiple versions of this uh, how you find out this uh, coefficient is let's say i have two customers i have total nine movies right so these customer have seen this movies jungle book iron man kung fu panda before sunrise breach of spies and forest gump let's say it is i'm doing this exercise for netflix and this customer is two then he has seen certain kind of movies so this simple formula is total number of movies between those two customers how many movies they have seen right either this or or right and so how many movies is common to both of them right so this customer one have seen this total out of this nine movies how many one two three four five six movies he has seen this customer has seen around seven movies right the commonality between these two customers customers 1 and 2 are there are four movies those are basically this forest gump iron man jungle book and uh, kps uh, kung fu panda right these are the four movies they have seen in common right total number of movies is 9 right so the jacquard uh, similarity coefficient will be 4 by 9 0.44 same thing if you just uh, imagine there are millions of customers right so for each combination if you find what is the jacquard similarity coefficient and try to group them together right those people having jacquards similarity coefficient between 0.2 to 0.25 0.25 to 0.3 0.3 to 0.35 the more the number so i'll try to netflix will try to recommend those people let's say having jacquard coefficient more than 0.7 right so they these will find let's say there are a group of uh, 20000 customers or 30000 customers where viewing behavior netflix behavior is almost same right similarities and that number they have to define right so let's say they define that it as 0.7 and when they define 0.7 as the cutoff they find 20000 customers so for those 20000 customers a recommender system recommender system will recommend okay so those customers or those viewers who have seen these kind of movies also watch this movie right similarly like you see this uh, recommender system in amazon if you have purchased this customers who viewed this or customers who purchased this also purchased some other items right so that is again like a, this extension of this is nothing but your market basket analysis there again we bring some additional parameter like how much revenue will are is this part clear how you are calculating this yes sir then same to this but sometimes what might happen uh, just think about this way uh, we have we might have watched so those two customers might have watched four movies together right uh, not together they have commonality that okay the one person has watched those four movies other person also have watched those four movies but not necessarily that they have ranked that movies or like that movies uh, in the same manner right i might have watched the same four movies but the way i liked or the Uh, movies i dislike might not be the same as the other person right same thing with the amazon purchase also i might have purchased certain uh, material certain items from the amazon but my experience with those item might not be similar with the other person's experience right so if i have certain consumer behavior data right i know that what is their feedback how they rated that uh, product uh, think about zomato think about uber right in zomato if i am purchasing certain product from the certain restaurant at the end i am giving certain ratings same product somebody else will buy he or she might have different ratings right whenever we have that kind of information we are not just recommending okay you purchased this item from that restaurant you also uh, like persons or uh, customers who bought these kind of items also 
but some other item that is one type of recommendation if i make it little robust or make it little complex rather than only looking into the similarity i look also into the how did you like it or how will you how did you dislike it right so your likeness parameter or your feedback if i take into consideration then i can use something called cosine similarity it is again a numeric parameter right so whenever you have data in the numeric metric or interval format or ratio or interval format we can use this so same customer let's say two customers they have rated so there are uh, there was so here if you see if i have total six movies so here jacquard coefficient will be almost like one so they both have watched total there are six movies are there and they have both watched he that person has watched customer one also six movie customer two also has six movie right the intersection is one total set is also one so jacquard similarity coefficient is becoming one but what might happen the their uh, preferences might be completely opposite so if you see the customer one the rating what he has given to those three movies where he has given five exactly the other customer has given opposite rating so they are though they are watching the same kind of movies their preferences are almost dissimilar right their ratings what they have given is almost like 180 percentage degree different right so in that case or it need not be like this 5.1 it is a extreme case it can be like not same right so in that case what will happen we are calculating something called cosine similarity finding the cos angle between them so uh, let's say this uh, uh, person has rated 5 one so if you believe that one is the worst movie five is the best movie ranking so this is customer one's rating customer two's rating how will you really find out this cosine similarity so if you look into the similarity indexes summation of multiplication of the ratings 5 into 1 plus 1 into 5 like this if i add this up multiplication any of for each of them is 5 right 6 into 5 30 divided by 5 square 25 1 26 27 then again 25 then that is uh, 52 plus 1 53 plus 25 78 here also if you find this is 78 square root of 78 is 8.832 the same thing for the customer too right so i'll get a value of 0.385 right so this if it is more it is close to 1 the angle is less if it is close to 0 angle is 90 degree or 180 degree right obviously it will not be negative because we are taking a square of this a lower cosine similarity indicates low similarity between two observations completely similar observations will have a cosine similarity value of 1 cos 0 will be your 1 right so both have a similar direction of similar intent similar behavioral pattern right so whenever you have a feedback data think about zomato think about uber think about uh, wherever i imagine feedback you are getting you can use this kind of uh, similarity index to find how customers are similar or how customers are different from each other so this is again like if you have the data if you do not have the data you just have the data whether somebody has watched the movie or not like netflix i don't think we are providing a uh, rating as such but uh, if they bring that out bring this in right then they can be uh, providing a robust uh, recommender system so these are two different kind of system where we measure similarity between two customers or two responses so when is a two basically we are we can do it for millions of customers also uh, is this clear or any doubt then uh, any i'll show this in your uh, saas enterprise miner the clustering basically there are two types of clustering i think some of you there uh, if the, you are in um, marketing research class we have discussed that how that uh, clustering uh, differences are there uh, one is hierarchical clustering we start with a um, let's say i have 5000 customers i th- start with that okay i have 5000 clusters then i try to add them up agglomerate them up right 
So from 5,000 clusters, I measure distance between each customer. Those customers who are close to each other, I agglomerate them or aggregate them. Then I create fewer number of customers. Like that, I keep doing this till I reach my intended result, right? Whenever the distance between them, the jump is, so this is a typically a dendrogram. So how do you decide it using or seeing a dendrogram? So if I put a horizontal line at any point of time, right, the number of intersections it is happening, it shows number of clusters. So if you see the red line is intersecting here, so it shows two, two places it is intersecting, that means two clusters. If I drag a line at 15,000 uh, distance, the number of clusters will be one, two, three, four, right? Whenever the distance, so you, you have to look into, let's say if I have a core cluster solution, and when I'm jumping to two cluster solution, the distance decreasing by 5,000. Uh, but when I am, let's say this 5,000 clusters, uh, if I drag a line, I think that will be around eight or nine different clusters. I'm moving to 10,000. How many clusters I'm reducing? The idea is try to choose a cluster, which is the jump pitch where from the previous cluster is not that much, right? If I go back to this uh, one cluster solution, the jump will be almost 10,000, right? We'll try to have that. Obviously nobody likes to have a one cluster solution. That means all of them, there is no differences between customers, right? Also, we cannot make a less number of uh, clusters, right? So hierarchical clustering in a sense, uh, like gives you idea that how many clusters you can create. In uh, SAS, actually, we do not use dendrogram. We have two options. I'll show you that uh, what are those. This is basically for the SPSS, R, and Python. We will be using this kind of dendrogram. Then, how do you measure the distance between two clusters? Uh, generally, we have this average linkage is the most used one. I take the average distance between pair of uh, responses I have in two clusters. If I have two points here and two points here, I measure the distance of this point from cluster one to distance between these two clusters, then the point distance from this cluster two to other two point, take the average of it. Single linkage is minimum distance between the nearest two point, right? Whichever is the minimum distance, that will be taken as the distance between two clusters. Complete linkage is maximum distance between two clusters, whichever is the distance between the max like kind of the most distance point between two clusters. Let's say this is a customer where uh, I believe the frequency of purchase is very less. Age is also very less, less than 19. And this is a group where average age is more than 25 and average frequency is greater than three or five, right? So I'll find the point or find the customer who are more far from each other, right? So that will be my maximum distance between those two clusters. Here, any number of points are there, you create, uh, let's say I have 10 points in cluster one or uh, 30 points in cluster one, 40 points in cluster two, 30 customers in cluster one, 40 cl customers in cluster two. So there will be 30 multiplied by 40, 1200 pairs. So for each pair, find the distance, find the average distance, that will be the distance between two clusters. Then there is something called words procedure. Here, basically, it is a variance method. So you find the average of this. So this is basically within the cluster, what is the minimum of distance? So if let's say I have five points here, the average or the mean I calculate and find the average distance from that mean. Similarly, in this case, average distance from the mean is nothing but your variance, right? Similarly, for this five point, six point, I create a average distance from the mean and trying to minimize that. So within cluster, I'm trying to minimize the variance, right? I'm trying to feed those points. If I feed those points where the within cluster distance from the average is minimal. Centroid is almost similar to average linkage method, but in the average linkage method, what happened? If I have 30 points here and 40 points here, I'll create how many? 30 into 40, 1200 pairs and take the average distance of 1200 pairs, right? Rather than doing that, you create a centroid point of cluster one and centroid point of cluster two and take the distance between those two, right? So this is the centroid measurement distance. So remember how you are creating clusters. 
the distance between two clusters will be maximal and the distance within clusters will be minimal right so that that is the two approaches to create clusters or segment right then there is non hierarchical clustering so which is uh, other way known as k means clustering so i have to define k means means how many clusters you have to create so generally what we do we use hierarchical clustering to find out how many clusters we have to form then use k means clustering to form those many clusters right and sometimes it is defined by the business now you have to form three clusters or five uh, customer segment then we go ahead with that uh, method so here the idea is you randomly create if i am asking about three clusters or my business is asking about three clusters randomly i select three point and say that okay these three my three are my cluster center whichever point are close to those three point or two point those will be treated as part of that cluster right then again i do that exercise now i find out what will be my next set of clusters right and i'll keep these iterations changing your cluster centroid if i say that okay this uh, initially this red is my centroid and this yellow is my centroid then i remove that then i group this red balls to or red circles to this group of cluster cluster 1 and this yellow circles to this group of uh, clusters cluster 2 right then again i measure the distance between those two centroid point right whichever the centroid of this group of cluster that will become your cluster number 1 and whichever the centroid of this group of point that will become cluster number 2 then whichever point is near to this that will again move to cluster 2 so basically what happens i randomly keep changing or changing my cluster centroid point and accordingly your nearest point will become part of that new group or new cluster right till the iteration will continue where there is no change in movement that means if let's say cluster 1 have 30 customers and cluster 2 are 40 customers so iteration will continue for 500000 times when there is no movement from cluster 1 to cluster 2 right one that moment stops i'll say that okay this is my final cluster right the only difference between these two is like kind of you have a uh, you have to mention in the beginning how many clusters you are going to frame or how many clusters you are going to form right uh, then again everywhere again we are using the euclidean distance right whether it is your hierarchical clustering or uh, non hierarchical clustering most of the times we are using euclidean distance okay uh, so now about how you use in sas sas there are basically two methods uh, qb clustering criterion and aligned box criterion so the basic fundamental is if i am creating a cluster and i am saying these are three clusters let's say i have certain data and i create these three clusters so this is based on my model if i have created a random distribution of clusters and that random distribution of data through a certain um, algorithm so that is how that cubic clustering criterion or aligned box criterion is used some random distribution of data or reference distribution has happened in that case so imagine the scenario because in clustering we do not have something called a training data set or a testing data set because we do not have any label data set so it is basically automatically creating a testing data set the testing data set is a reference distribution if i use this cluster for a random data set how my clustering is going to perform on that right so the data are just random samples from a uniform distribution so that distribution your algorithm will create because we do not have any additional data set such that the k clusters from the original data exhibit no greater compactness than k clusters from the uniform reference distribution right so if randomly i create some clusters and now i am using a model and i have created three clusters if there is no difference between them right then my clustering method is not optimal right because if i am creatively i am creating a random clusters and the compactness compactness means the distance a point from the cluster or whatever i have defined there is no difference between like like we always used to check with a baseline model right same thing here it is creating a reference distribution a reference distribution of data point if my 
clustering algorithm let's say three clusters have been created the compactness what i get in my cluster is no different from a, a random set of clusters with a random data then my algorithm is not actually creating optimal number of clusters right so like that uh, and how that random distribution or reference distribution of data points are created so qb cluster criterion is a uh, thumb up rule method uh, uh, so there is certain formulas on which where those data points will be distributed uh, i think back in 1970s or 80s that has been created aligned box criterion is the newest method which was uh, put back in 2013 so that is where based on the information what you have provided based on your training data there is obviously you know training or testing data set based on the data set what you have given using that data set as a reference it will create a random data set in a cubic clustering criterion it doesn't matter what data set you have automatically algorithm will create set of data points right so it will only know that how many variables are there but in aligned box criterion it takes care of how your data distribution is there whether it is a continuous data what is the range of data uh, how many variables are there so this is much more uh, and i'll show you this is much more accurate most of the times than uh, cubic clustering criterion right then how do you decide that okay how many clusters i have to create so this is something reference distribution this is a random data set which your algorithm is creating and trying to find out whether my cluster point which was created earlier is better than a random uh, cluster point right so how do you decide in number of clusters so whenever uh, the belief is if uh, there is no difference between my cluster point and random set of cluster point the gap will be like the difference between the cluster point will be not much right because it will be almost similar right what i'm telling the average distance in my cluster point is not uh, not that different if i create some random clusters and average distance from the random cluster point so if i create one cluster so one cluster means obviously there is no cluster there is only a, there is no groups right only one group if i consider all of them as one group there is not much difference between data points what i have and the random data distribution what i'm getting and as and when i keep increasing number of clusters if you see at uh, number 3 uh, number of clusters the distance between whatever i am getting by using this many clusters and uh, what uh, cluster distance i am getting by using random set of data is maximum what does it means in other way around so whenever your uh cubic clustering criterion the distance is highest what does it mean by using your model the clusters which you are creating is performing or outperforming if you have not created or used that algorithm to create that clusters if you have randomly selected cluster point so it is basically creating a big distance between what uh, data point or what data set you are getting and what data set your algorithm would have created without any reference distribution right so whenever this point is maximum that shows that your number of cluster that should be optimal so if i so in this particular case if i have three clusters that shows that the optimal number of clusters will be three because after that again the distance is reducing right whenever this distance between two clusters is maximum it's not two clusters two different set of clusters one clusters which is being created by your algorithm other cluster now set of clusters which is randomly being created without any logic or without a lot of logic it is just a random distribution of clusters right if the distance is maximum that means yes you have created a better set of clusters if there is not much distance so it says that okay you are like rather than using algorithm you can automatically or randomly select cluster centered same thing with uh, here um, apc method or aligned box criterion whenever there is a peak right whenever there is a peak or the distance between two set of clusters is maximum you can choose that number of clusters in this particular case i can go my 
so there are different options to choose wherever the first pick option comes that means i can choose four number of clusters or whichever is the global pick i can choose six number of clusters there is something called first maximum with standard deviation you change the cluster distance with certain standard error and try to find out how many clusters are being formed there is something called with the all option so it will check okay let's say in global pick i have creating three clusters first pick also three clusters first maximum with standard four clusters then whichever is repeating because here global pick let's say three clusters first pick three clusters and with this person only four clusters then if i choose this all option three clusters will be chosen but let's say this is three this is first okay whatever has happened here let's say global pick is six first pick is four first max max method with standard deviation is three right if all three uh, options are giving you different answers global pick is six the first pick here is four first pick is the whenever the this diagram is having its first pick right this is the first down and this is the first pick first pick is at four global pick is at six and let's say first maximum with standard is three right then we'll always choose the global pick method that is six right so most of the times we'll go by the global pick method because that is the optimal solution for the range of data what we have been provided so the the basics of uh, these two methods is same using our algorithm using uh, this cubic criterion method or aligned box method we are creating set of clusters then randomly some set of clusters are being created and we are trying to find the distance between them so whenever our set of clusters is at the maximum distance from the random set of clusters we are going to choose that number of clusters right so these are the two method for creating clusters okay just let us jump into sas enterprise miner for that uh, let me open the sas studio to create a data set okay just let me show you what is the data set about so this is about uh, country data i think there are 160 or 170 countries and it gives the different information child mortality export data health parameter in a scale of 1 to 10 imports income inflation rate life expectancy fertility level total fertility then gdp per person right gdp per capita per person right so these are the information given to us right what we are trying to do if i have a minimum 180 or 167 countries are there right so in this data set if i am trying to create clusters based on this how many total nine variables nine variables are there nine parameters are there by using these parameters i am going to create number of clusters i'll show you all the three methods so so first any i think you know the process so we have this csv file we are going to convert this into a csv file i'll change i'll save here in my life pp paus 2021 i'll change clause starting for march sorry april see so you can also upload that into your sas studio convert that into where is this come not wrong it so this data set is created that is a converted sas file right clustering 4th april the directory remains same so i'll copy this path i'll go to sas enterprise miner so i'll create a new project
project name clustering for capital next so data sources first let me run this it's Lib name so I created a library called close during for the free and I put that path in the start code. Go to data sources, create data source. Next, browse. Cluster in fourth April. So I have this uh, cluster fourth April data set, which I had created in SAS Studio, right? Okay. Next. Next. Advance. Next. So here, if you see all the roles are input variables, right? Because we do not have a label data, right? In the logistics regression or in data entry, we always used to have a target variable, right? Binary variable, we used to have a target variable. Next. Then I'll create a diagram. Clustering for the bill, so I'll drag this data source here. Okay, and I'll go to explore. So, in the under explore, there is a clustering method. I'll drag this. So, this is the clustering, the first clustering, what we're going to run, right? So, this is how you are measuring distance, what is nothing but the variance method, right? Within the cluster, the variance is being measured and trying to minimize it. Preliminary maximum 50, minimum two, final maximum 20. So this is the CCZ cutoff, QA clustering criterion cutoff, right? So final maximum rather than 20, let us reduce to maybe five. Okay. Then, Selection criterion, what else? Okay, standardization, right? So uh, normally it is always a better uh, kind of approach to standardize your data, right? Before you run a clustering. Otherwise, just imagine a scenario. Some variables in uh, rupee, let's say, obviously in this case, almost uh, not much difference. But sometimes what might happen, you have customer data in rupees, lakhs or million of rupees. And some information is only one digit or two digit numbers, right? So in that case, much more importance weightage will go for the higher distance number, right? Which are rupees in rupees, lakhs or millions, right? So it is always better to whatever data you have before running clustering to standardize the data, right? So that each variable has equal weightage, right? Unless it is otherwise mentioned, right? Because clustering, when we are taking, we are believing that each variable has the same weightage, right? So we're on this. So, okay, let me just rename this. This is Kiwik CCC clustering. So this is the first method. Okay. So let me run this. So results will be there.
So because I have put a cutoff of five clusters, it has created a five clusters. So this provides the information about the cluster center centers, right? So what is the so for cluster number one? What is the child mortality, exports, uh, GDP per person, health imports, right? So this is your cluster information. Just. Then you can get into view summary statistics. So this is the plot which I was talking about, right? So here, if you see, the more number of clusters, distance is increasing, right? So what we had said, whenever so the peak, whenever it is reaching and it is coming down. In this particular case, actually, if you see in the CCC method, right, the distance number of clusters is increasing, and if I just look into the QV clustering criterion, it keeps increasing, right? So actually it is going to the as many as different. So each country is looking like different than any other country, right? So here actually, if you see, we are not getting, though we are forcing that, okay, to five clusters uh, from the CCC plot method, we are not getting a proper result that how many clusters to be formed, right? Because just the number of clusters increases unless, so here, it is a drop then increases and it keeps increasing, right? So this is where using this method, we are not getting a proper result that, okay, how many clusters to be formed, right? So we'll go to the next method. Sir, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Sir, is the CCC method the same as the elbow method that we use? Yes, yes, almost yes, similar. Sir. So elbow, where you have a drop, right? It increases, then suddenly yes, drop happens, right? So yes, that sir. is almost similar. OK, sir. So then we'll go and create a using other method. So we'll go to, this is again uh, high performance uh, data mining HPDM. If you click this, so there is something called HP cluster, right? This is where that ABC method is utilized. So this is a latest method which gives little bit better result. So high performance clustering, again, I'll rename it. So I'll say to align box criterion clustering. Okay. So if you see number of clusters is selected, align box criterion. So, so if you look into these options, uh, number of reference data set one, maximum number of clusters, it is going to create six, minimum number of clusters two. How it is going to select? Based on the ABC chart it is creating. Whether it is fast peak value, global peak value, fast peak with one standard error or all criteria, right? So we'll let it remain same, global peak value, put okay. Then if I run it, So if you see, it has created uh, four clusters. So if you see the global maximum has happened at this point, gap is 0.4436 before this, at three number of clusters, the gap is 0 0.4242, right? So this is the, if I'm creating four number of clusters, right? This is the number of clusters, which is giving me the optimal solution, right? So this is by using ABC statistics. 
most of the times this performs little better than your uh, ccc criteria right again like the similar thing what we look into but in the ccc criteria what we look into we look into the chart and say that where for the drop is happening right we are reaching a maxima and drop is happening here in this particular case obviously drop is happening but it might happen that there will be local maxima global maxima right here we have talked about the global peak whenever the global peak happen so it is happening at a number of four number of clusters and the average gap size is becoming 4.4.4436 4, 4, right and then obviously here um, the cluster uh, description is there for four number four number of clusters right so these are the two methods let me show you the third one so you can add uh, this clustering so rather than align box criterion if i say that user specify if i say that no no create uh, for me this many number of clusters rather than here align box criterion if i say that no for me just create three clusters or four clusters or five clusters so this is nothing but your k means clustering right because i am defining how many clusters to be created because other two cases i define minimum number of clusters maximum number of clusters in the align box criterion i said one to six maximum number of clusters can be created six it actually created four clusters now what i am going to create k means clustering and i'll say here future specify rather than align box criterion and i'll let me create three clusters okay so here because i specified that okay you have to create three clusters it has created three clusters and this is the information about those three clusters what is the like average mortality rate export gdpp uh, inflation life expectancy right so these are the three methods first two are basically hierarchical clustering where we are not mentioning number of clusters algorithm is deciding number of clusters obviously we are defining how what is the maximum number of clusters uh in the last one k means clustering we are defining how many clusters need to be formed right so this is the three methods of clustering in uh, saas enterprise miner right so i have given you a small data set on customer basically age their expenses uh, something on the spending score so you have to use all these three methods uh, ccc method abc method and uh, k means clustering and compare the results right how those three results uh, differ each other right so that is your class exercise for next class any any questions any doubt yes sir i have two questions yeah. so first of all sir uh, uh, bhuvandeep sir was talking yeah. that uh, when we do the clustering sir uh, the clusters are also sensitive to the initial seeds that we take there might be possible that if we are using C so sir i was asked since we were doing in excel he said that we'll have to run the process again and again but in saas do we need to do that or does saas takes care of that as well the sensitive to initial seeds uh, that is true uh, like it it will be always there because clustering it depends upon which is the initial points being taken right uh, because in the abc method what happens the iterations happens number of times so that's why the result what we are getting the seed initial seed uh, 
keeps changing and it takes the average. But in the CCC method, the reference distribution is taken only once. So depending upon which is taken as the initial seed, your results might vary, right? And that's why if you remember, we discussed that, right? So whichever you are taking for your seed criteria, that need to be like in the production set, uh, same thing need to be taken. Uh, like if I take a seed criterion as let's say two, three, four, five, six, that same criterion in the SAS uh, kind of uh, profile, same seed file need to be taken when they are running, somebody else is running the clustering algorithm yes, or the CCC yes, method. But in the ABC method, ABC method is, uh, that is why it is a high performance uh, data mining method because it keeps number of iterations. It is not that it is creating only single reference distribution, it is creating multiple reference data sets, right? So that uh, problem what you just talked about, uh, depending upon which is the initial seed based on your clustering might change, that problem will not occur in the ABC method that much. Yes, sir. So, and uh, one more problem that uh, clustering has was that it is sensitive to plus uh, outliers as well. That is why sometimes you have to switch from K means to K meteoroid. So, sir, is yeah. that problem also taken care by uh, SAS or do we have to no. do it separately? Yes. yes. So, that initial cleaning has to be done. That is correct. So, that here I have not done. Yes. So, that uh, SAS, unless you remove those outliers or kind of or like, let's say, some. Uh, by mistake, some information is uh, like wrongly coded or some mistake has happened. Let's say some data points is millions and some data points is in lakhs or rupees or uh, 10,000. Those things, yes, that uh, you have to take care. In the beginning, in the data imputation or data cleaning, you have to carry out that. That uh, SAS will not take care. And sir, is there a function to carry out k mediates? Uh, not in the enterprise miner. So you have to write code for that. Code for that. Okay. Okay, yeah. sir. Got it. No, not in the drag and drop. You have to write code for that. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. So that's all for today. Uh, let me know if you have any doubt on the clustering. Next class, we'll discuss something called market basket analysis, right? Again, using uh, SAS. And then after that, we'll uh, use something very interesting, credit score, right? Uh, like uh, each of you, if you are using a credit card or you have a loan account, each of you will have a credit score assigned to you, right? How that is actually generated, right? So in SaaS enterprise manner, that is all, already a module, which is a credit scoring model. We'll try to learn that, okay? So that is that is at least our, uh, if I think that will be our last class, I guess. Let's see how many classes we have. Uh, who and has so, left? Uh... Yeah. Yes. So I had also forgot to remind you. So you had said that to remind you uh, about the BIC and SBC difference. I yes, yes. Actually, that day I searched, I, I just, after that class, I was searching. It, actually, it seems both are same. So both of them, if you look into the formula, formula yes, wise, sir. actually both are same, little bit difference towards the end. So I think uh, what you were telling that day is correct. So there is not much difference between BIC and SBC. Okay, sir. Bansika 171. Anyone else who joined late? Yes, sir. 209. 209. Okay. Okay. Chalo, take care. Bye-bye.